U.S. President Donald Trump has announced that he is reimposing tariffs on Canadian aluminum pro uh, products. Rather, earlier today, I signed a proclamation that defends American industry by reimposing aluminum tariffs on Canada. Canada was taking advantage of us as usual, and I signed it, and it imposes because the aluminum business was being decimated by Canada. Very unfair to our jobs and our great aluminum workers. So if you're keeping count, this is the second time in the last two years that Trump has hit Canada with import tariffs on aluminum. The first was back in 2018. An agreement was reached in May of last year to lift those tariffs, but that agreement included a promise to monitor possible surges in aluminum exports. Trump now says Canadian producers have broken a commitment not to flood the U.S. market. Joining us now to help us make sense of it all, the CEO of the Canadian American Business Council, Mary Scott Greenwood. We reached her in Washington, D.C., so what, what is this really all about? Is this really all about uh, aluminum numbers? Uh, Scotty, what's going on here? You know, it's ironic, Catherine, because uh, the president was standing in Ohio uh, at a Whirlpool facility and all of their products would be more expensive. Their whole value chain becomes more expensive with these, with these tariffs. You know, the U.S. Uh, can't supply all of the aluminum it needs for, for manufacturing. And so we have to get it from somewhere. Canada makes... Um, the most sense uh, for all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. But what the president is doing um, right before his election is he's making everything from F-150s to fighter jets to a can of beer more expensive. It's a, it's a, it's a wrong-headed policy. It's a bad idea. And by the way, I don't think the politics are so good. I'm not sure the last president that got reelected on a Blame Canada campaign. I can't, I can't think of one. Because <laughs> um, we're so gosh darn nice up here. Isn't that the stereotype? But listen, you're talking about how this is making things more expensive. Certainly that's an argument that we've heard from the Canadian government uh, the last time we, we saw this movie. Why is he doing this then? If it, if it is not going to benefit Americans, what, tell us a bit more about the electoral politics and why he might think that this is in his interest. Well, look, I mean, he, he's trying to... to um, solve a problem of oversupply, global oversupply of aluminum at a time when the economy itself is contracted by a third. Uh, U.S. GDP, we know, has, has contracted. So he's trying to blame somebody. He's trying to, the, the oversupply of aluminum that we've seen over the years actually comes from places like China. Um, and Canada really isn't the problem. Um, but Canada is a place, the president thinks he can hit back at Canada for some reason. Um, I just don't think the politics are there for him. Standing up for Americans, yes, the politics are good. But in this particular case, he's not really helping American manufacturing. So, so I don't know. Uh, I just disagree with him. If I was advising him politically, I would, I would say to, to you know, pick something else. <laughs> uh, what, what about the numbers, uh, Scotty? I don't know to what extent you're, you, how deep you want to dive into this, but uh, he is, the argument is, you know, Canada's flooding the market. To what extent do we know that to be a legitimate or illegitimate claim? Well, we just know that's wrong. Mm. So the market collapsed. Um, and so there's some uh, Canadian aluminum that's being stored in the United States. You know, what Canada can't agree to do is have an artificial quota to solve, you know, the U.S.-China problem. That wouldn't make any sense. So if you believe in markets and if you believe in the president's signature legislative achievement, which is the new... Uh, the new NAFTA, the U.S.-Canada-Mexico agreement, uh, you have to be against the, these Canadian tariffs. Uh, it just, you know, again, the, the economics don't make sense. Uh, the president, you know, often argues with his own advisors about this. He's tariff man, you know, and he thinks that uh, he thinks that he'll be rewarded for being tough, for standing up to people. I just, but I just don't see it because it's not, you know, it's not borne out in, in the facts. Canada isn't dumping aluminum into the market. The fact is the market contracted and uh, because of the pandemic. And hopefully as the economy comes back, you do things that, that make it easier for North America to compete, that you don't, you don't make it more expensive uh, for your own supply chain right here in the United States. I'd like to talk uh, a bit about what this means for Canada and the Canadian response. We may, again, if we cast our mind back to the last time we saw this movie, uh, dollar for dollar countermeasures. Is that something that you think Canada ought to consider this time? Well, I think Canada probably is considering it, mm -hmm. right? The last time we saw this in, in May 2018, uh, uh, the Trump administration imposed tariffs. Canada hit back in several very sensitive areas, 
And that was a smart political move. It was it was hard to do. It was a tough call. But it you know I think the idea is to get uh, some of the president's allies or some of the people he needs in Congress to stand up to him, so that Americans, more and more Americans, are saying, look, you can't punish our trading partners and punish our allies and not expect them to punch back. Uh, that that's not how the world works. That's not how Canada rolls. That's not how Mexico rolls. Um, and so I think. Um, I could imagine that there's retaliation that's being contemplated. There are probably lists that have already been drawn up, uh, and and we'll have to see what it is. And that, by the way, is is really unfortunate. That is not the way uh, that Canada and the United States ought to be conducting ourselves, campaign year or not. It's just it's just a bad idea. And again, as we're trying to rebound from this from this um, humanitarian and health disaster and the economic catastrophe. Uh, now is not the time to, to have a policy that really makes North America effectively less competitive uh, with the rest of the world. In terms of uh, getting these tariffs to go away, is there any lesson that Canada should learn from last time? I mean, obviously the context is particular at this point if we're talking about the electoral impetus uh, in all of this, and I'm not sure to what extent the, prime minister, uh, the president rather can be deterred. But uh, what do we know about what happened last time that might tell uh, Canadian officials about how to handle it this time? You know, Canada and Mexico uh, played it exactly right last time. So last time the context was a trade negotiation. And uh, the president thought he could get advantage um, or somehow get his way uh, with our two closest trading partners and friends um, by imposing tariffs. And it didn't have that effect. Canada had a measured response, had a tactical, strategic response, and really engaged U.S. counterparts um, in making the case. So it wasn't just Canada saying, hey, this isn't fair, but, but pointing out really what happens to companies like Coca-Cola or Campbell's Soup or you know, Ford F-150s, uh, you, you know, the, the iconic pickup truck that, that my husband drives and so many Americans drive. Um, Canada really leans into examples like that um, to help make the case uh, for, for why this is a bad idea. And I, and I can imagine that happening uh, again this time. Do you expect this to bleed into other aspects of, uh, be it the trade relationship or the relationship more broadly? Do you think there'll be knock-on effects? Absolutely on the trade relationship. Uh, you know, because it's it's we're supposed to be entering a new era of free trade in North America, something that will help get us through uh, the economic crisis that we're currently in. And instead, you've got the president taking a step in the wrong direction by imposing uh, imposing tariffs on Canada. So I do think there will be an effect um, and and broader. You know, look, we've just got to get through uh, the uh, the election period, I think, um, I don't think there will be political engagement, if you will, during that time um, uh, from a diplomatic point of view. But once we get through it, if the president's reelected, then we have to have a conversation. Uh, if he's not reelected and Joe Biden is elected, then we're going to be having a different conversation, which will be about things like Buy American provisions and making sure that Canada is exempted or Canada is considered American for the purpose of, of that Build Back Better campaign that Biden has um, when he talks about Buy American for infrastructure. So it's, it, you know, Canada has to engage in the conversation. The Canadian American Business Council has members on both sides of the border, and we engage all the time. We'll be having a congressional roundtable just next week uh, with Congresswoman Susan Del Benny, who is on that powerful Ways and Means Committee. She is a very important voice on trade with Canada. She knows a lot about it. So anyway, um, you, you have to talk to everybody. You have to stay engaged, and you have to just be careful during... Uh, during these last uh, several weeks of the campaign. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about it today. Thanks, Catherine. Good to be with you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.